This week on The Wire, borrowing boosted by APRA change, market recovery gains momentum, and sentiment surges in survey. Welcome to The Wire, guys, where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in real estate, finance, and investing for Friday, the 12th of July. But before we kick it off, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals. Whether it be things like being debt-free or travel and lifestyle or early retirement, we do it using only what people currently have available to them right now and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. Now, if you're a first-time viewer, welcome. Please make sure you follow or subscribe to this video so that you don't miss out on the future. And if you're a long-time viewer, I know there's heaps of you guys out there. We love you guys, that's why we do this. So thank you very much. Please make sure, and no matter who you are, please make sure we love to see your interaction with these posts. So please comment, question, like, love, angries. Don't, and don't forget our Just Ask Tim video series that I do every week where uh, I could be answering your question live. Uh, and of course, if I don't get back to you, one of our team will always get back to you. We wanna make sure that you guys have all the resources and information that you need to make the right decisions. But let's get into the top stories happening this week. So, borrowing boosted by Aprochain, major change. Okay, so a major constraint of borrowing limits has been removed by the banking regulator APRA, allowing real estate buyers to borrow more. The changes suggest a household potentially could borrow 10 to 20% more than they could around about six weeks ago. Now, APRA has officially confirmed what was revealed in May, which was that it would scrap a rule introduced in 2014, which meant borrowers were assessed on a 7.25% interest rate. APRA will now require banks to test if customers can manage repayments with a 2.5% uh, buffer uh, above the loan's current rate. Now, mortgage broker Aaron Scully of Infinite Finance says the lender my state has published a new assessment rate of 6.2%, while Westpac and St George uh, will now assess at 6.5%. This is enormously helpful for anyone trying to get a loan, Scully says, and it will make a profound difference because loans will be assessed a lot more easily. It's an awesome change. Now, also UBS economist Carlos Cacho says households on an income of $200,000 a year could boost their loans by an extra $100 $150,000 to $1.25 million. And that's if they gained a leading market interest rate. I mean, we do have interest rates available right now for under 3%, you know, so if that's something that you're interested in, please make, make sure you reach out to us. Uh, but moving into the second story for this week. So market recovery gains momentum. So the housing recovery is gaining momentum as buyers buoyed by better borrowing conditions stake their claim in the market. SQM researchers, and this is one of the leading independent researchers in Australia, Louis Christopher says the recovery is real based on rising buyers by demand in a low volume market. The preliminary clearance rates for Sydney auctions last weekend was 78% from the 552 homes listed, and that is according to core logic, logic figures. In Melbourne, the preliminary clearance rate hit 70% across 388 auctions. Nationally, there are fewer homes taken at auction because of the school holidays in most states and midwinter listings are typically lower. The 945 auctions listed for capital city markets returned a preliminary clearance rate of 70%, the fourth week in a row that clearances exceeded 60% and much higher than the auctions were running at last year. Christopher says that most market recoveries he's observed since 2001 had grown from a loan volume market. I'm not in the camp that thinks that this is a bogus recovery because it's based on low volume so far. He says it is a real recovery. There are more buyers out there due to cuts in interest rates, the coalition win in the federal election and the loosening of credit restrictions by APRA. All right, moving on to our next top story, and that's sentiment surges in the survey. So um, confidence in Australia's property markets uh, leapt in the wake of the federal election as sentiment around credit availability surged and expectations for economic growth turned positive. This is according to ANZ. Uh, the ANZ slash Property Council uh, survey. Results of the survey directly reflect the change in sentiment after the May 18 poll. The headline index of confidence make its second biggest leap in the eight year history of the survey. Sentiment about whether debt finance would be easier or harder to secure over the next 12 months turned positive for the first time since 2015. We've seen a very positive pickup in confidence around the election. And that's coming from Property Council Chief Executive Ken Morrison. It is around the jump in confidence in the economic environment and also more a more positive view about what will be happening to credit levels. The improved sentiment towards residential property is prompting developers to buy sites as they position for the next housing cycle. Seville's director, uh, residential site sale, uh, director of residential site sale, Stuart Cox, says that there's been a huge increase in inquiries by developers since the election. 
So guys, that covers off all the top stories happening for the week in real estate. Before we go though, a couple of things that I wanna remind you about. Firstly, make sure you follow up, subscribe across uh, any of our social media platforms, depending on where you're seeing this. Uh, you can find us at, at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim Guest AU. Uh, and, and look, it's just gonna keep your finger on the pulse and keep you ahead of the pack. And it's one of the things that's really important when it comes to finance and investing. Um, also, make sure you friends, share this with your friends and family. So a lot of the research actually shows that your own financial success is correlated or your own financial circumstances are correlated to the average of the five people closest around you so one of the easiest ways to get rich is make sure your friends get rich first okay so share this with your friends and family so they can benefit it and of course if you're gonna be sitting on a you know tropical island beach somewhere in the future it's not much fun if you're gonna be sitting there alone so you want to make sure that people that you love and care about are there with you um, also we love to see your interaction with these videos so please make sure you love like you know angries question comments we love to get this is very much community orientated so we love to see your interaction with these posts and finally also don't ask uh, don't forget um, our just ask Tim video series where I can be answering your question live like we said if there's anything you want me to talk about in more detail or specific questions that you want to ask me I could be answering that live and the promise that we always make to people is guys if uh, if I don't get back to you one of our team always will so guys, that's pretty much it for the week in real estate for this week. It's got some beautiful weather lined up for the next seven days. So I hope you guys are gonna do a little bit like me, get out in the sun, soak up some vitamin D. Don't forget our Just Ask Tim video series. Normally do that early on in the week. Um, so stay tuned for that. And guys, look forward to talking to you very soon. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.